I'm David Littlewood from Sandia. Let me start by thanking the organizers of One Non-Local World for giving me a chance to present. I'm gonna talk about the Paradigm Code. Uh, here we go. Okay, Paradigm is a mesh-free paradynamics code. It's an open source C++ code that was originally developed at Sandia. Uh, makes heavy use of the Trilinos uh, software library. Uh, it's been worked on by a number of different folks. I listed five of them here, myself, Mike Parks, and John Mitchell at Sandia, uh, John Foster from the University of Texas, and uh, Patrick Deal from LSU. The goals when we, as we wrote Paradigm, um, were to implement the mesh-free method of paradynamics as uh, proposed by Stewart in the early 2000s. We wanted to do that in a code that was uh, high performance and could run on large parallel computing clusters. We wanted the code to be usable in an engineering sense to run uh, real simulations um, of actual components to test out paradynamics in that sense, and also to have uh, a platform for methods development uh, where people could implement their new ideas and demonstrate them. Um, right, so and it, just to be clear on the governing equations that are that form the basis of paradigm. So I've written the uh, paradynamic balance of linear momentum there at the top in state-based form. I would imagine you're all very familiar with that, as well as the mesh-free discretization that was proposed by Stewart and Abe Ascari. So in this case, we're replacing the integral with a summation over a finite number of neighbors, which I tried to illustrate there on the right. So the terms in the brackets represent the constitutive models. So uh, we have four states acting on bonds. And of course, we capture material failure in paradynamics through the weakening or the failure of paradynamic bonds. Um, to take those equations and implement them in an analysis code, uh, there's a number of required ingredients. So this list will look very familiar to folks who've worked on finite element codes or really any other engineering analysis code. You need discretization, material models, time integrators, file IO. Um, and I have on the next slide, a little bit more detail on, on those elements as implemented in Paradigm. Um, I'll try to highlight a few here that they are sort of differentiating capabilities of Paradigm. Um, so the discretization in the file I.O. is important, and I'll talk a bit about that in a later slide. Uh, time integration. So Paradigm can uh, be run both for explicit dynamics and for implicit time integration, for example, for quasi-statics. And that's one aspect of Paradigm that we spent quite a bit of time on. Um, Paradigm can construct the tangent stiffness matrix and uh, solve those systems using linear solvers that are available in Trilinos. We've actually had some good luck as well with some matrix-free methods, which are available in Trilinos. So as Christian mentioned, the, uh, you know, the density of a paradynamic stiffness matrix is proportional to you know, the size of the, the horizon. And in an extreme case, right, it would be fully dense, which is a, a brutal nightmare to solve for large systems. Um, yeah, so that's that's a differentiating capability of Paradigm. Uh, another important software element is the proximity search. We spent time creating a efficient parallel proximity search because that's needed for construction of the neighbor lists at the beginning of the simulation and also for contact. Um, and finally, I'll point out Paradigm has a pretty mature interface for constitutive models. So it's a state-based interface, but that's also completely uh, suitable for bond-based material models as well. We have a general interface for non-ordinary state-based models. And uh, the current release of Paradigm has uh, a number of material models implemented in it. For example, linear paradynamic solid, the bond-based elastic model, uh, a couple models, for example, a viscoelastic model and a plasticity model developed by John Mitchell, as well as a handful of others. Uh, and I, I'm just going to highlight quickly the aspects of Paradigm where we chose to rely heavily on third-party libraries. And the reason for that is because these are 
uh, performance bottlenecks, and we wanted to take full advantage of the available computer science in Trilinos, for example. So file IO is a big one. Um, the tangent matrix, which I mentioned before, so assembling and storing that in Paradigm is done with uh, the ePetra library from Trilinos, um, linear solvers. Obviously, that requires quite a bit of expertise to create a, an efficient one. And same is true for the, uh, the proximity search. Doing that in parallel is, is non-trivial. Okay, so here's the, uh, the, the overview of how one acquires and builds Paradigm. Um, it's a C++ code, so you need a modern C++ compiler. Um, you also need an MPI compiler like MPitch or OpenMPI. There's a handful of dependencies for Paradigm, and by far the most uh, significant one of those is Trilinos. So just a word of caution, uh, building Trilinos is, is complicated, can be complicated. If I'm building Paradigm from scratch on a new machine where I don't have anything installed, it takes me the better part of the day. And for folks who are new to high performance computing or new to Trilinos, I would expect that to take longer. So we do get questions on the GitHub pages for Paradigm and Trilinos. And uh, so I wanna make sure people know that's available to them if they, they choose to give Paradigm a try and get stuck in the build process. There's places where you can reach out for assistance. Once you get Trilinos built, Paradigm is relatively straightforward. You clone the Git repository and, and you run a CMake script and, and build from there. I have an example of a CMake script for Paradigm at the bottom. Okay, let me walk you through what it looks like to run a simulation with Paradigm. I've broken that into four steps, uh, the discretization, the input deck, the actual running of the code, and post-processing. So uh, the discretization that is operated on by Paradigm internally is defined by the X, Y, and Z coordinates of each node and the volume associated with that node. And we use the concept of blocks to, to, to create logical groupings of nodes so that we can do things like map material models, or material model parameters to different regions in the domain. Uh, we also have the, the node set concept, which is groupings of nodes that are used for primarily for boundary conditions. So in the tensile test example that I'm showing here, since it's just a single material, uh, you would only need one block. And presumably you would create node sets at the top and, and at the bottom and use those to apply uh, displacement boundary conditions uh, that you would define in the input deck. So at Sandia, we tend to create our discretizations using a meshing tool called Qubit. Uh, it was designed for finite element meshes. So we would create a hex mesh or a tet mesh, which Paradigm can then convert internally into a meshless discretization. So of all the software I'm talking about today, Qubit is the one piece that does require a license. So I realize not everyone will have access to Qubit. Um, an alternative that's available in Paradigm is our text file format. Uh, so the, I, the motivation there was to give uh, folks the opportunity to create the discretization however they choose using a Python script or MATLAB, Fortran code, whatever, and lay out your discretization in terms of X, Y, Z, volume, block ID, and then uh, the node set lists. And those can be read straight into Paradigm as well. All right, running the, uh, sorry, the input deck is next. So I won't go through the details on the input deck. I will say we made a concerted effort to make the input deck human readable and logically organized. So there's snippets here on the right. Hopefully it gives you a sense of what the input deck looks like. There's regions for things like material model def definitions, how those material models are mapped to the different blocks, the section for boundary conditions, the section for solver parameters, et cetera. Um, it's, a, it's a code that's run from the command line. So here is a, it's essentially a screenshot from me running a simulation on my Mac laptop. Uh, MPI code, so I'm in this case, I'm running on eight cores with the MPI run command. Um, if you're running on a big compute cluster, you would use whatever job submission system they have in place, uh, like Slurm, for example. 
And uh, then the fourth step is post-processing. So after you've waited for your simulation to complete, uh, Paradigm produces output in the form of Exodus files. Uh, Exodus files can be read directly into Paraview, which is the screenshot I show here at the bottom. So Paraview is uh, freely distributed. And I noticed some other speakers earlier today appeared to be using Paraview, so that's great. Um, there's also a handful of different tools that are freely available for operating on Exodus files. So the Secus tool set is one example. Those are command line tools. Um, you can read Exodus data directly into a Python script using the exodus.py module, which I find incredibly convenient. Uh, demonstrating there in the upper right, just an example of defining a quantity of interest, in this case, the, the velocity of the sphere in the simulation. So I defined that essentially in the input deck. Uh, and then after the simulation is run, I'm able to extract that data out of the Exodus files using a Secus tool. And I plotted the average velocity of the sphere there over time using GNU plot. So of course, everyone has their own favorite tools, um, but hopefully the Exodus I believe the Exodus file format is flexible enough that it should work for most folks. Okay, so the last couple of minutes, I'll just talk briefly about what it's like to develop in Paradigm. So the, there's a schematic shown here uh, to give you a sense of the software architecture for our vision for the software architecture. So we knew that there would be places in the code where folks would wanna do methods development. We wanted those to be easily extensible. They're highlighted here in orange. So some obvious places are the material models, damage models, contact models, perhaps. Uh, compute classes is one thing I haven't talked about yet. That's a feature in the paradigm code that uh, essentially gives users access to all of the field data so that they can uh, do really general calculations. For example, defining their own quantities of interest. You might do a calculation like an internal energy calculation uh, you might compute neighborhood statistics, whatever you need for your work, and then that can be included uh, in the output files from Paradigm and post-processed as you see fit. So I, I don't have time for a lot of detail on this, but I'll give you just a, a brief overview of what you would do to implement a new material model in Paradigm. It's a C++ code, it's object oriented. So as you might expect, we have a material base class. You derive your, your class from the material base class. And then you are required to implement one non-trivial function, which is the compute force function. Uh, so paradigm hands to the material model, a set of data where the force needs to be computed, it hands all of the neighborhood data for those points, and then gives this function access to the field data through the data manager. So example fields would be the initial coordinates, the displacements, the velocities, and the force, which is the field that this function is required uh, to evaluate. That's all you need to do. There are other optional routines, for example, the compute Jacobian function, if you have an analytical expression uh, that, that can be used for constructing the tangent stiffness matrix, or if you want to use automatic differentiation or some other approach, you can do so. That can give you a more efficient implementation. You don't need to, however, because Paradigm can compute the tangent stiffness matrix using finite difference. Um, so really the only thing you need is the compute force function. Okay, that brings me to the end of my talk. I'll leave you with the link for the Paradigm repository. And as Marta and others mentioned, we have a, a longer tutorial um, next week if you'd like to hear more about Paradigm.